Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shirt PCC3 with the second semifinals match. It's going to be Yube and and Eternal Rookie versus Black Duchy and Skazi. First map is going to be, of course, Desert Plateaus because that is the match, the map that is the first match for every semifinals match, and it's a good map anyway. Okay. So we have getting started and powers. I mean, players are in the game. I just, I just can't even think for some reason. Can't talk. I don't know why. That's a bad thing. To be able to talk. Global search allow me to edit it when it's off screen. Bullshit. Anyway, uh, hopefully, Ob Studio is better than this. I think it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to allow off scene editing, so that will be useful. We turn rookie and Cuba. Wow, they're starting right next to each other, northwest side of the map. Or maybe not. Still pretty close. And we saw what happened last time. Kind of risky to do that. It's good early game, but really bad in late game. Yeah, Cuban Eternal Rookie in the northwest side. Cuban going for Jump Bot Factory. Eternal Rookie has not chosen his factory. Well, Skazi, or not, not pregame anyway. Skazi is going more south. Not sure where Black Tush is going to start. Black Tush is not sure where Black Tush is going to start. Really has no idea. Oh, there we go, actually. He's going to start out over. Well, he's planning on building an air factory in the center, apparently. <sighs> yeah, this is the second semifinals match. And we're starting off. Black Duchy is going for air at the center of the map. While Skuzzy goes for Klogibot Factory, southeast side of the map. Turn Rookie going for Klogibot in the northwest side of the map, with Kyubei the very northwest side of the map. So it's kind of cross positions with South being somewhat open. Considerably different from the last game we saw on this map, where we had the West Side players just taking the entire West Side, while the East Side players were stuck in the Northeast. See that we have a couple Swifts coming out already. Very quick Swifts. Swifts in a Hawks, while it looks like Skazi is focusing more on the production, getting Glaive than Conjurer, then a few more Glaives than more Conjurers. While Eternal Rookie also being fairly aggressive, getting five glaze faster than Skazi does into Conjurer. And a couple Pyros coming up for Cubay. And 20 puppies. 20 whole puppies. Well, for now, they'll be blown to pieces pretty soon. They'll blow themselves to pieces pretty soon. That's what they do. Oh, whoops. Sorry about that. Anyway. Black Duchy, he is in a pregame music. Should I do that? Add some music for the pre. I don't know if that's even possible. I don't know if Spring allows that. Should. That would make this sort of thing a lot easier. But anyway, raid coming in from Eternal Rookie, as of course it does, but there's still too many Lotuses. Black Duchy pretty much saw this coming, and Eternal Rookie has no easy way in. That really is no. Actually, he has Skaz. Yeah, Skazi is completely vulnerable. But Black Duchy, not so much. Black Duchy needs to get... Yeah, he has no real vulnerable side, but Skazi has no defenses. Was so, like, Kyubei actually going to be able to torch... He's going to try to torch some of Skazi's forces up, but he's not going to jump in, from the looks of it. That seems reluctant to jump in, which is a good idea. I mean, he must be able to jump out if he has to. But trying to torch these glaze if he can, and unable to do so. They're running too fast, too far away. The Cuban internal rookie not getting that far ahead. Cuban, however, is expanding pretty heavily. Skazi moved south, but he expanded slower. And internal rookie looks like he's going to start trying to harass out Skazi. Now Skazi does have a decent amount of glaze, but his his commander is completely well, not completely vulnerable, but needs support forces to not be vulnerable. And internal rookie is retreating. 
Not going to go for the commander attack, which is wise, because he was going to get support, and that would have been death. Even though Pyros were coming in and didn't do much, Lotuses just beat Pyros outright. And puppies can't even get close enough to damage anything. No, ultimately didn't do much. While well, Kyubei is building more puppies, he's got... How many puppies does he have so far? He has nine. Some of them have been used, however. But yeah, he has nine, and... Does... Oh, it's anti-air any... Oh, anti... Yeah, it's anti-air, but it's kind of hard to hit with. And unfortunately, going to get into the Lotus range when it lands. Does manage to get a Conjurer, though. Not bad. But, yeah, Kyubei needs to have... Needs more harassment going on. I mean, he's better harassment than this was. However, nice job. Okay, Harold Rookie is going for this now. He is going for trying to kill Skyz's commander, and Skyz's commander is going to go down. No doubt about it. Skyz's commander goes down. Very quick off there with Eternal Rookie. I mean, Eternal Rookie and Kyubei have actually been ahead economically this entire game. Black Dutchie's ahead militarily, but a lot of that's air, and as soon as anti air comes up, it's going to be dead. It's going to be down and dead. I didn't mean to mix those two words up at the same time. I don't mean to talk gibberish, but when I do, I tend to smash words together. That's my kind of gibberish. So, Skazi taking a bit more damage to the south side of the map. Admittedly, at this point, I think the biggest target will be the factory, but even then, honestly, with no economy, there's not much building that Skazi can even do. He only has five metals, so he's building at half rate. And he's building a Zeus, so that's taking even longer as a result. Like Zeus is already 350 metal. That already takes normally 35 seconds. Now it's 70 seconds because of the 5 metal being the bottleneck. And Black Dutchie isn't building quite at full rate. And that's actually assuming he's not building anything else. I think he might... No, he's not building anything else. He has... Right now, no other builders. He's reclaiming a bit... But yeah, not much. Eternal Rookie, on the other hand... Has got the entire southwest side. Kyube has the north side. And they're just closing in now. Surprisingly, Kyube hasn't really gone for any Archangels. Or any other sort of anti-air. No real anti-air dedicated has gone on. Oh, never mind. There is one Archangel. Not my mistake. The Archangel here, however, is taking a fair amount of damage. Gets rid of... Gets rid of Phoenix. Nearly gets rid of two Phoenixes. Gets rid of a Raven as well. So it deals a decent amount of damage. Now, the south side of the map, we have Glaive versus Zeus, which is going to win for Glaive. Since Zeus is the only one that was actually catching on fire as a result of that particular Phoenix. And then this... Oh, apparently the Conjurer's not going to go down? How strange. There we go. Now, Eternal Rookie's going to get rid of the Conjurer. At this point, Eternal Rookie and Cube have this game. There's just no way around it. They have the economy. They have the military. Some well-placed raiding might do the trick. I don't think it's quite over yet. But it's still kind of tough. And no, I am not drunk. It is 6 a.m. I got up at 2. I went to bed last night at like 6.30. Or 7. I went to sleep. I slept for about 6 hours, but I'm still up much earlier than I expect to be. It's just throwing me off. Actually, it's nearly 7 a.m. That's yeah, kind of throwing me off. I'm afraid. I just can't think about it. Also, not having a secondary commentator does mean it's a lot harder for me. I kind of wish that Flores was here or Sackhouse was here or something. Because doing it on my own does require a lot more mental effort. It is more exhausting. Not to make any excuses, just letting you know that is... That is why I might screw up or go slow or pause or smash words together accidentally. Or otherwise act drunk. Although, I suppose if I was actually really good at this whole commentary thing, I'd be able to do it drunk without people noticing. But then again, I don't drink, so I don't know. At any rate, we do have Skazi coming in on the backside. He is not going to do too much damage. Actually, he gets rid of a Contra. That's not bad. And these... these... Phoenix is providing still a thorn in the side. That being said, Cuban and Eternal Wookiee have this game. Like I said before, they just need to... They need to consolidate, they need to build up. They can't push in, that's the problem. They can't quite push in yet. But they have the forces they need to be able to at least hold back any raids that come in, any forces that try to break out, and then build up, build more forces, just continue to get their army larger and larger. 
and then push in. Although Skazi really just killed Skazi right out. I don't know why they haven't gone for his factory. That would probably prompt a surrender if that happens. Oh, wait, Floris is in the room? I don't see Floris. I don't... No, Floris isn't here. He had a meeting to get to, so no, he is not here. If he is here, he might be just either AFK or here from a phone or something. Or the meeting is over, I don't know. At any rate, if he is here, that'd be great. Get him on for the bronze and final match, that'd be awesome. But if he's not here, then I'm on my own. Unless Saktos here, or someone else who wants to do, who can do this. Not sure, like, Saktos, Floris, and Lightman are the only ones I know of who do, do any sort of... I guess Lucky Waldo as well, but he hasn't done that in a long time. So I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Quick commentary aside, Skazi is getting hit. His factory's going down, and the surrender will likely happen fairly soon. Down it goes. Factory goes down. Metal Strider goes down as well. Skazi has... How does he have metal income? I guess he has two metal extractors. They have three each. Yeah, okay, he's got metal income. He's got a bit of metal income, but not very much. Basically, all down to Black Duchy. And Black Duchy... He... Well... He's basically just going to probably throw in the towel pretty soon. I don't know. I don't think there's going to be much going Oh, wait, sorry. Eternal Wiki is Magman. My mistake. I forgot about that. Yeah, Eternal Wiki is Magman. So he does have an AFK. I mean, a AKA. He is not AFK, thankfully. He has an AKA. It's Magman. I apologize. I did look that up earlier. Yeah, Magman slash Eternal Wiki. Loves his rating. And he's been doing it all game. And he just killed Skazi with it. And now he is going to have to attack a bit more straightforwardly, but he can do that too. We saw he can do that. And Google Frog saying he wants to help co-commentate. Well, I might be able to pull him in on the next game then. But for now, I have... I have to set that up. I have a bit of mute microphone setup stuff. Anyway, we have another attack in from Eternal Ro Rookie that is going to finish off Skazi. I mean, why is he... Okay, can't see why he's attacking that because the defenses are pretty strong for Black Duchy. Black Duchy has gone for a shield switch, by the way. But at the same time, Skazi hasn't got much to work with. Most of his metal is reclaimed. Really, this one worker here, that's the only reason Skazi has any chance whatsoever of doing anything this game for the rest of the game. But at this stage... It's just kind of boring, waiting for the players to win. And Eternal Rookie is not... Eternal Rookie and Kyube have won this game. They just haven't pushed in yet, but... Yeah, the Archangel's pushing in close enough to get rid of the air units. Bandit's gonna try to counterattack, and the Moderators won't be able to stop them too easily. Hmm. Bit of a tough setup, but still, Eternal Rookie is there as well for support. So Eternal Rookie will be able to probably just win from here. Setting up some reclaim and some static defenses to get rid of everything around here. Trying to torch this out is Black Duchy, but even with that, it's not going to matter too much. And Puppy is coming in, well, getting hit by the bandits. No pyros, though. Oddly enough, QB not going for pyro, not going for well, sumo, not surprised there. But going for a lot of moderators. And going to move in with the moderators. I mean, they one shot bandits, so that's good. Well, they apparently do. Yep, yeah, they do. They one shot bandits, alright. 150 health and 500 damage. Yeah, it doesn't matter of fire rate, but with enough of them, you can one-shot all the bandits and then run through and kill everything else. And Skazi's been gifted a raven to lose. Killed the hacks on that loss. That killed it, but yeah. That's it. Black Duchy throws in the towel. We are on to game two. If you enjoyed that, I'll be back with... Another match, well, another match two, game two, in just a moment. So, see when that happens. So stay tuned. Welcome back, ZeroK fans. Sorry about that. Back to the game. It's going to be, once again, QB Eternal Rookie versus Skazi and Black Duchy. Sorry I missed the start of the game because it's on Eye of Horse, too. I'm just trying to get Google Frog set up and they... Uh, virtual audio cable is going to be a real pain with Windows 7 because it doesn't make setting up your audio mixing very easy. 
Also, there's a stupid thing where the audio stuff gets all messed up. I don't know. Audio is just... Audio is screwed up in Windows. I hate it. I play around this bullshit. Uh, sorry, I'm just... Yeah, it's getting to me. Anyway. So, back to the game. QBA going for a light vehicle factory. Turnwicky going for a Clokebot factory. Skazi going for light vehicles as well. And Black Dutchy going for a Clokebot factory. So, pretty much mirror. Actually, perfect mirror because the Clokebots are at far positions as well. Light vehicles are in the center. This is... Yeah, second game. Skazi and Black Dutchy lost the first one. So, QBA and Turnwicky, if they win this, they move on to the finals against... Against... Uh, Anakin the Sponge, that's right. Yeah, Goofrog and Anakin are in the bronze match. Which sort of the problem with having Goofrog commentating right now is because he's... I mean, now it's fine, although... Yeah, it's screwed up. That's why I'm frustrated, because I just couldn't get that set up in time, because the stupid VB Audio Cable B was muted, which I was using for... I mean, VB Audio Cable is great, but trying to set it up where it's... Like, with Windows. Windows does not make it easy to do. Setting up individual applications volumes. My Eternal Rookie is well, able to get in pretty well. I mean, able to defend pretty well. He is able to get in pretty well too, or should be if he's... No, I don't know. This this ray is not going to work especially well. He's Why is he going for the Scorch? Oh, well, okay. He's trying to run away. But this ray is not going to work out for him at all. Losing a lot of glaze for nothing. He gets nothing out of it. Scuzzy and Black Touchy pushing forward. And yeah, I am kind of hoping that Cuban and Eternal Rookie win just to make it shorter. But... This is... Anyway, where was I? Ah, yes. QB and Eternal Rookie are going in with... Sorry, I should adjust a couple things. Ah, sorry, I don't know why I'm doing this now, but I can't... Okay, whatever, that works, I think. Sorry, I was trying to adjust my microphone so it's a little be so it's further below my vo my mouth. Just because I'm having a hard time setting up. I don't know, this chair sucks. I'm sorry, I'm just in a really bad mood right now because I am getting quite tired. Uh, this is a really bad idea to do in the morning. I don't know. I guess it works for the European players. I'll do it for them, but it does not work conveniently for me. I'm sorry, it really does not. I thought it would be okay. Thought I'd be able to sleep the night before and it'd be just fine. Apparently I was wrong. Apparently I was quite wrong about that. Anyway, we do have a tick coming in, which... Ow! Sorry, my... I think also my neck and back and my left side are tight or something and pinching a nerve and my left hand keeps falling asleep. Really annoying. I've been doing that for the last few hours. It never does that, but for the last few hours it has been. Anyway, we are having Scuzzy coming in with Scorchers against Scorchers against Cubase Scorchers. Cubase Scorchers, however, are actually, well, it's pretty even still. Numbers are really deciding it at this point. But Black Jersey coming in with the flank, and it looks like they might win. Uh, back. <laughs> Sorry, this is really painful. Anyway, Tick coming in over for Eternal Rookie. Nice Tick shot. Stuns out those Scorchers and... Stuns out, oh, stuns them out, but no follow-up, or a couple of Glaze follow-up. Will that even do the trick in time? I will kill a couple of them, but it's only, no, it won't kill all of them, that's for sure. Kills all but one, though, and the last one does not get away. So ultimately, they do defend. Yeah, Skazi and Black Dutchy are putting in a very strong opening in this map. I mean, it was their choice of map, so not surprised, but still. Very strong opening, nonetheless. Or, well, very strong opening, probably as a result of that. So yeah, they are working well. I mean, they're taking most of the map. They've decent, decent threat. They're kind of pushing Turner Lucky and Cubay back. Actually, Turner Lucky's commander about to go down. Turner Lucky jumping away over this commander, trying to avoid getting killed by the Scorchers. But thanks to the pit, he actually is able to do so. Scorchers cannot drive into there. But it's well. Still a free reign for Scorchers to get around this. Oh, not quite free reign. There are Lotuses that stops them. Scorchers coming out for Cubay in response. And it looks like Black Touchy is starting to retreat a bit. Cubay's defense is just to consolidate the north side. 
But he needs to take the center. They Cubane Bla and Eternal Loki needs to take the center. Black Duchy is being forced back somewhat. Actually, Cubane has enough forces. He can't actually deal with Black Duchy's glaives. And Black Duchy knows this runs them away. While Cubane moving forward with the Scorchers. Getting rid of some radar. Going for a full-on counter raid. Gets rid of the radar. Could dive Skazi's... He's diving Skazi's commander. Gonna yeah, take out Skazi's commander. Skazi's commander cannot escape. Unlike Eternal Rookies. Down it goes. And it looks like... Cubay opened up some... He opened up a bit of a path here. So Skazi has lost his commander. Eternal Rookie still has his. It's inside his base. Actually, Black Duchy still has his. Eternal Rookie also still has his. It was escape. We saw that happen. And now Eternal Rookie has a bit of a chance to move out somewhat. Slightly. I mean, Skazi's going for a counterattack. But... Cube and Eternal Rookie are using that aggression and building behind it. Getting themselves going. Not just attacking with it and leaving it at that. They are expanding a bit behind it and they're starting to get an economic advantage. Or at least economically even. It's not quite a total advantage. It is still fairly even. Like Cube and Black Duchy have the same economy. As does Skazi and Eternal Rookie. Skazi, I mean, it's on the same side, like Eastern players are slightly better off right now. That being said, though, it looks like Cuba is going to be taking out the east side, and with that, a lot of Black Duchy's metal. A lot of Black Duchy's everything. The Black Duchy is going to be losing another metal extractor. Ooh, the third metal extractor going to go down. Down that goes. Not quite got rid of these ones here, but still the ones on the side. However, a tick will finish that raid and follow up Glaives, kill off the Scorchers. Still a good raid. Although, immediately, that's a lot of reclaim that was provided, so I suppose it wasn't the best raid, but still, pretty good raid. Knocked out the metal extractors, and not much else, so not bad. And Skazi is attacking, doing a counterattack along the west side of the map. And Eternal Rookie, not quite as well prepared, it would appear. Although, he does have some warriors, a lot of warriors, actually. They weren't in position. At the same time, do have Black Duchy coming in with a tick. Tick is prepped for the west side attack in case an attack comes along the west side of the map. or well, west center. And Eternal Rookie's about to run his commander right into that tick. And another tick hits a couple scorchers, knocks them out, but not completely. And there's more scorchers left to defend. Still, the scorchers that were knocked out do die, and Eternal Rookie's commander gets away from the tick that was about to get it. I'm not sure. If, I think Eternal Rookie does notice that tick. He has damaged it a bit from the looks of it. But still, it wasn't a bad attack for Black Duchy. However, Cuba and Eternal Rookie are getting more stable. They're getting more on their feet. They're expanding more, pushing out more, setting up the defenses where they need to, and pushing out with Warriors. Eternal Rookie has a very solid position right now. His commander needs to retreat, needs to heal up, or get repaired. And then once that's done, then he can probably assault with it again. However, that tick, that tick apparently did not do much. Yeah, it went off, but didn't actually cause much damage. Didn't kill the commander, that's for sure. Eternal Rookie trying to push in. He actually could push in from here. These warriors can tank that damage and kill everything. That would work. But it looks like he's trying instead to defend against this. Faraday doing a good job just dividing forces up. Fortunately, it has now died. That being said, there are, these Scorchers are also now dead. But that pushed back Eternal Rookie slightly, harassed him a bit. Regardless, Cuba and Eternal Rookie do have an economic advantage. Militarily, they're still kind of even, so... The game is even. It's starting to get a bit into Cuba and Eternal Rookie's favor, but only slightly. And Black Duchy getting a lot of workers building up on the east side of the map. And at the same, side, same time, Skazi getting up some caretakers in his main base for extra production. I mean, everyone's actually floating metal right now. That's sort of the thing. Though Cuba does have a couple caretakers. He is pushing his factory very hard. As is Eternal Rookie, while well, Skazi just now getting a caretaker, as is Black Duchy, though Black Duchy has his commander assisting his factory for the longest time. But yeah, in all cases, it's actually more like energy is the bottleneck than anything else. He starts the commander. Commander is taking a lot of damage. It needs to get away. It's too late now. The commander's going to die. There's. Or, wait, is it too late? No, the commander barely survives. 60 health. That was close. I was sure it was dead. I am very surprised there, and now here we see Eternal Wiki pushing in very hard with the Warriors, and basically just, he's leveling Skazi's base. Not much that Skazi has to deal with this, he has no slashers, he has no levelers, which would at least help. 
Nope. Got nothing. He's got Ravagers, but they're not going to be hitting accurately enough. So yeah, Skazi's got no base anymore. His base is dead. His factory's about to go down. Once that happens, then basically there's not much more you can do. Down goes the factory. Down goes the last few units from Skazi, as well as, thanks to Cubay, last few solar collectors. So Skazi is basically out of the game. He has one, no, no constructor, no, he has one constructor, one mason. That's all he has left in a couple levelers. The southwest side of the map. But I think General Wiki and Cubay are going to focus on finishing off Black Duchy and then just winning. I mean, that... They stabilized and came back well. That switch over to Warriors by Eternal Wookiee, that that took the west side, and then the east side was just a matter of numbers. And also attacking the right side. I mean, he did, he did take out a couple of metal extractors, which is useful. Good thing to do. Slows your opponent down. Not sure if it would have mattered that much. So it is... Now Skazi's main base is out. And a scythe going around the back just for good measure. Yeah, so I think I'm going back to get rid of another metal extractor. I just killed some stuff so far. The warriors, however, going through the valley at the same time. Basically hitting on all sides. Stinger. Stinger being the one thing getting in the way, but even then, it doesn't really matter. And Cubay is attacking to the southwest because he's sure something's there and he's right. While also attacking to the center east. He needs to get rid of the Stinger, but it's not going to be too hard. There he goes, gets rid of the Stinger. Down it goes. Half, oh, well, no, a third of his Scorchers get stunned out. Now half, because he's lost a bunch of them. Doesn't really matter, though. Finds all the Conjurers that Black Touchy had set up here. And, well, seeking to kill them all. We'll see if he actually manages to do so. Probably will, so that's all of the Constructors. Not focusing in the southwest, but frankly, I mean, he probably should, but the north, the center east, I mean, should just send one attack order north, but center east is a big target, and it has been eliminated. Scorchers, I mean, Stingers are st they're stopping the Warriors coming in. Which is being problematic. But even then, this Scythe, able to get rid of the Southeast economy. Black Duchy with enough reclaim in the center east. That's the thing. This area here is the only reason Black Duchy hasn't outright surrendered and lost the game. And now Cuba going north, getting rid of Skazi's last ditch attempt to not die. Getting rid of his last mason, not quite, no, not getting rid of his last mason, avoiding the Ravager instead. And trying to get rid of the Solar Collector, but, oh no, not Ravager Leveler. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot more sense why you avoided that. Can't dodge it. Can't avoid it, but can't really dodge it. So Cube is going in for the kill on here. Moves a couple Scorchers to the Stinger, but that's about it. And, ooh, that tick. That tick did a pretty good job, but not good enough, unfortunately. Siskazi has... A few more solar collectors these built up. And now it's just a matter of getting rid of these glaives that Black Touchy has built. And with that, I think they're going to surrender. But I don't know. No, Skazi's going for a heavy tank factory. I don't quite realize how behind they are. But at this point, Cubay and Eternal Rookie just build them. I and mean, Cubay has four caretakers and a few constructors being used to pump this factory full of metal. And Eternal Rookie couple caretakers, needs a few more caretakers. He is flooding metal at this stage. Though he is going Moho Geothermal Plant, which is at least using up some of his metal. Is this even in range? Yeah, it is! There's a pylon! Nice! Well, this is actually, yes, yeah, this is General Rookies. Nicely done there. Don't see enough Moho plants and enough pylons, but it's good to see them when they come up. But of course, is trying to get through here, which actually is going to be a tough call. I mean, or not tough call. It's going to be a tough job to do. Tough call who's going to win, actually, because... Scorchers need to dodge those rockets and punch through, but I don't think they will be able to. They are, however, going to not even focus on that. They're going to focus instead on this metal extractor. And fail to take that out, unfortunately. Lost focus too fast. Took out a few Rockos, but not quite anything else, unfortunately. And a bunch of warriors, half a dozen warriors coming, no, eight warriors coming along the west side of the map. Tearing apart what Skazi had as his last ditch effort to have anything. The rest of what he has is basically just a bit of support, maybe, for Black Duchy. Maybe. Not much. Honestly, Skazi donating this to Black Duchy would probably be more useful than keeping it for himself, where it is right now. I don't think... I don't... No, it's... I'm trying to repair. Yeah, it is repairing. Yeah, it's just... I suppose the fact that he's pushing metal into this factory is good. But still, it's just 
Black Touching Sky Scene. Admittedly, we have seen a lot of games where the people who are behind end up just turning it right around. I don't know if this is going to be one of those games. One of those games we saw, the Moon Q10X one, was on a match that I was on a map where the match just went weird because players end up going for one of them went for Center Spider Factory. What the heck? Oh, whoops. Ooh. Oh, Eternal Rick's commander's gone down. Totally missed that. That was just off screen too. That was a, that was a mistake. Thinking about that while rubbing my arm. Anyway. Doesn't matter though. The southwest side's gone. All that's here really left is the north, the southeast corner. And once that's broken, then that will be game and match, and we'll be on to the bronze match. That'll be Google Frog and Aquaman versus Scuzzy and Black Dutchie. After that, we have the finals, which will be Cuban Eternal Rookie versus versus. Oh, how do I forget this? It will be. Oh, Anarchy in the Sponge versus Cube and Eternal Rookie. That's what it is. So once these guys are done, just get in. Just win already. You guys can push and win. Cube and Eternal Rookie, you can push and win. You have already won. The game is yours. Well, there's a counterattack going on with the Rockos, but the game is yours. Why you guys haven't just won so far is... Well, okay, now you've won. Now you're pushing in to win. And there's just one section of defenses and power, but that's about it. And the Rocco's here, and that's about it. There's nothing else. And a bunch of Warriors. Now, this is this is a good match to showcase why Warriors are quite good. Why I quite like Warriors. They do well as Assault Forces. I mean, they're Riots, but they do have good Assault properties. Just be careful around Skirmishers, that's all. Yeah, here they come in, the Warriors and Zeus coming in and finishing off this base. Back, main factory about to go down. Black Dutchie's commander about to go down too, and looks like Black Dutchie, if he doesn't vote resign, he's gonna be just out. And that is game, and that is match. 2-0 for Black Dutchie, actually 2-0 for Cube and Eternal Rookie. Well done, you two, well done. So we will be on to the bronze match. I think. Not in the brackets, mind you, but we should be onto it. Not sure why the bronze match isn't displayed, unless we're not doing a bronze match, I don't know. Pretty sure we are though, because there is a third place prize. Yeah, we have everything laid out. There we go, yeah. Cube Angel Rookie and the Sponge. That's finals, and Skazi Black Dutchie versus Google Rock Acronym is bronze match. So, back in just a moment, once the bronze match starts up, assuming we are doing the bronze match. And, until then, stay tuned. I'll try not to fall asleep. 